looking at some of your films, it reminds me of, and like you were talking about the, um, the you know, 50s and 60s French cinema, um, it reminds me a little bit of that in the, the seemingly early days of cinema where, and you, you, you've written about this, the line between reality and unreality. We are so, and Hollywood is so adept at creating this dream world to us, and you have pointed out some of the pitfalls of that. Yeah. I think I, <clears throat> in one point, I start to be very bored with Hollywood cinema. Um, probably, you know, modestly speaking, maybe 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I felt a certain kind of drowsiness, kind of sleepiness um, in the cinema when I watch a very traditional Hollywood cinema. Yet I adore a certain kind of, you know, very classical narrative. For example, um, um, Billy Wilder, um, like I always like Billy Wilder type stuff, or oh, Hitchcock, you know, there's some certain kind of, um, I think, energy or, or concentration, um, aesthetic concentration, and this kind of cinema anxiety, nearly psychological anxiety in the cinema. So I love that kind of film. Mm -hmm. But lazy kind of just action driven Hollywood cinema, I, I actually, is my enemy. Because it's so easy for us, because it's so passive? Yeah, it's completely formulated. So each action after some minutes, you know, you can predict and then you learn nothing new. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's the indulgence of the violence and action in, in the repetitive mode, which is absolutely, I think, is kind of infantized audience and the low down the IQ of the, the mass. You know, it's not improving anything, not even aesthetic or, or intelligence, you know, any improvement, not at all. And in a way, I think this kind of cinema still uh, re-inhabit our intelligence, you know, made us much more idiots than before. You know, I think still our, um, I think our own individual vision with art format. So it become very lazy and dangerous art format. And then in that point, I come back to European cinema or Chinese cinema, and I think those kind of cinema not try to force um, money into your, into your brain or, or the money being forced into your brain with our consciousness. But then again, in Europe and in China, we are doing a similar thing, you know, yes. we're doing big commercial film. Right. And then I think just like, you know, be practical, come back to my own kind of filmmaking, you know, I'm kind of clear, I do essay film, you know, very mosaic film, but not experimental film. You know? Right, right. Because extremely important, when someone gives you half a million or a million, for example, my last film, UFO in Her Eyes, a kind of semi-real, not sci-fi, but quite big scale narrative film. It's more than a million euro. Um, I think when, when some organization give you a certain money, really you have responsibility to have strong narrative. So I'm actually, I don't really like abstract, um, kind of abstract cinema. Um, not after 80s, I think that kind of cinema is dead. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have much respect of, of some artist playing with light bulb right. you know, on off and then for half an hour. Right. And I thought it's most lazy, um, easy format mm -hmm. um, they could have. And you know, it's so easy to actually make much better and much richer, but people don't do it with artists to people, yeah. Um, and so I don't really like that. So I like quite dense, quite, you know, with certain narrative quality, but then you, you do have voice and aesthetic touch in the, in the, in the, in the film. Mm -hmm. And I try to do that, you know. Most of my film looks quite humble, because it's nearly like, you know, you see this kind of, I think an artist idea, but then you see the production is so humbly done. And then sometimes you will laugh a bit, you know, say, yeah, only if she can get, you know, something like half a million, it will be amazing. But then again, when you have half more million, the film will be completely different. It will be diluted into a quite commercial format. Right, because right. Because you do need to kind of pay respect or satisfaction for the money man, you know. True enough. And I, I, I realized that kind of dilemma, and I just kind of withdrawn back to a small scale filmmaking. And I try to do filmmaking more like my novel writing, which is me, I can control, and I want to do my aesthetic um, until the day they go to the market, because we are in the end thrown into this massive market. That's right. Yeah, and then that's a place you cannot really control. But before that platform, you can control your work. So I said, well, I don't want to go there in the very beginning. I, I only want to go there when I finish my work. You mm -hmm. know, so that's how I yeah, work. 